Today, I invite you to reflect on something, both simple and disturbing, not about a theory, not about speculation, but about how we interpret what we are seeing. These are the foundations of modern cosmology. Galaxies flying apart. Dark energy. Dark matter. The Big Bang. Cosmic expansion. Cosmic background radiation. This is the story we were given. And for a long time, it seemed to work. But, one question refuses to disappear. Are we interpreting the universe correctly? When the James Webb Space Telescope arrived, it didn't confirm everything. It complicated everything. Massive galaxies appeared where none should exist. Structures older than the models allow. Patterns that shouldn't be there. But are. Not because the data is wrong. Because the interpretation might be. Astronomy is not just evolving. It is facing something deeper. A quiet crisis. Not a small one. A foundational one. The better the telescope becomes. The more the universe refuses to behave as expected. Why is the speed of sound a limit inside matter? Why does light have a limit at all? Why does redshift increase? Exactly as if something deeper were happening? Are galaxies really rushing away? Or are we seeing something else entirely? The universe may not be breaking models. It may be exposing assumptions. Sometimes. The problem is not the equation. The problem is the interpretation behind it. There was a time when humanity believed light traveled instantly. That the stars were fixed. That our galaxy was the entire universe. Then came Hubble. And everything changed. Then came Einstein. And gravity was no longer a force. But geometry. Space and time were no longer separate. They became structure. Physics did not become wrong. But it became. Incomplete. And sometimes. Progress doesn't come from adding complexity. It comes from asking a deeper question. Einstein made one of the greatest achievements in human thought. By showing that physical law becomes coherent when expressed geometrically. He once said. The guiding idea of general relativity is that physical laws should be expressed in geometrical form. Einstein also considered the possibility. That gravity itself might arise from geometry beyond four dimensions. This video explores that possibility. With modern perspective and modern observation. Holding every equation intact. Preserving every tested prediction. And re-examining only the interpretation beneath them. But. What if gravity itself is the geometric dimension that we never named? Let's begin with something we think we understand. Space. We imagine it as emptiness. A silent container. A stage where matter moves. We think things travel through space. As if space were only a background. But what if that idea is already wrong? In physics, motion normally requires force. Push something. And it moves. But gravity behaves differently. It does not push. It does not pull. It bends paths. Objects fall not because they are pulled. But because their path curves. That's not a force behavior. That's geometry. Einstein removed gravity as a force. And replaced it with shape. Mass tells geometry how to curve. 
Geometry tells matter how to move. It's elegant and strange. Because at that point, physics stopped describing things and started describing structure. Then came the next shock. Time is not uniform. In reality, time behaves like something else. It slows down. It speeds up. It stops for light. Time passes at different rates when motion changes. Two clocks. Two places. Two different futures. Which means time is not absolute and not universal. And that leads to a fundamental question. If time changes with motion, if time changes with gravity, then what exactly is time? Is it a coordinate? Or is it something physical? Because if time were just a dimension, it would not bend. It would not slow. It would not stretch. But in reality, it does. Now let's look at light. Light does not age. Light does not carry a clock. Light does not experience time. From its own frame, its journey is instant. Which means, time belongs to matter, and motion controls time. At this point, something fractures. If gravity is geometry, and time changes with geometry, and motion changes time, then time cannot be fundamental. It must be a consequence, a process, not a dimension. If time is not the fabric of reality, then space-time is not the foundation. Time cannot be the container. If it changes because of motion, time cannot be fundamental. If it depends on geometry, so what remains when time steps aside? General relativity place time as the fourth dimension, not by measurement, but by necessity, because something had to be the fourth. But if time is not a dimension, then something else must be. Something real. Gravity is not behavior. It is not force. It is not attraction. It is not a field. It is geometry. But, what is geometry of? A shape cannot exist without space to curve into. Curvature needs direction. And gravity has one. There is a direction physics never named. Not time, but depth. A geometric depth. A spatial depth. Beyond the surface we call space. Gravity is not curvature of space-time. It is curvature of space. Into a real dimension. A fourth spatial dimension. The universe. Is not inside space-time. Space-time is inside. Geometry. The universe is not expanding. It is deepening. Not stretching. Not exploding. Not tearing itself apart. But curving. Into itself. If gravity is geometric depth, then light cannot escape freely. Not because it is pulled, but because it must climb. And climbing costs energy. Redshift is not Doppler. It is not motion. It is geometry. 
Light does not lose energy by traveling. It loses energy by escaping curvature. Redshift measures depth, not velocity. The farther light must climb, the weaker it arrives. That produces the same relation Hubble observed. Without expanding space, without dark energy, without mystery forces, when geometry becomes real, everything begins to simplify. Time becomes a consequence. Gravity becomes depth. Redshift becomes climb. Structure becomes shape. Nothing new is added. Nothing is removed. Everything falls into place. The universe was not launched outward as an explosion into nothingness. Not from a point, but a structure forming inside geometry. Not an explosion, but a geometric organization. Not a blast, but a deepening structure. And black holes are not broken physics. They are not infinities. They are not endpoints. They are geometric descent zones where matter falls not into nothing but into deeper geometry and time is not what the universe runs inside it is what matter experiences as geometry changes time does not drive reality geometry does this is not a revision of the equations it is a revision of meaning. No laws are broken. No observations are dismissed. Nothing is added. Only one assumption is removed. That time was the container. Instead of geometry. A model is not science unless it can be tested. Beauty is not enough. Coherence is not enough. Reality must answer. If geometry truly governs the universe, then it must leave traces. Everywhere. If redshift is geometric, then it does not depend on how fast galaxies move. It depends on how deep their geometry is. Which means light from similar objects at equal distance inside different curvature, must shift differently. That is testable. In standard cosmology, dark energy is added because expansion appears to accelerate. In this model, acceleration is not required. Geometry already explains the trend. Redshift increases because depth increases. Not because space is stretching itself apart. This removes an entire invisible component from the classic model. G4D predicts no singularities. Not in black holes. Not at the beginning. Because geometry does not tear. It deepens. Curvature can grow without becoming infinite, which means physics never breaks. Time is local, not universal. Every system carries its own rhythm, based on geometry and motion, which means there is no master clock for the universe, only physical clocks. G4D predicts differently in four places. Redshift behavior. Black hole structure. Early universe geometry. Time processes. And none of them require invisible substances. To make the equation survive. Geometry doesn't need support. It is the support. This is not a belief system, and 
not philosophy. It is geometry. Interpreted physically. It accepts every tested result. Every verified equation. Every measured fact. And only questions one thing. What we thought those facts meant. In the next chapter. We don't add mystery. We remove it. Because once geometry becomes real, physics stops being abstract and becomes obvious. G4D offers something simpler. A way of seeing. A way of understanding the universe. Not a belief. Not a doctrine. Not a replacement for what we know. But a way to understand what we didn't. A lens. Einstein did something almost no one has done. He showed that reality listens to geometry. G4D asks only one question. What geometry? The universe is not a riddle to be solved. It is something to be understood from the inside. The full theory, complete document, and all mathematics are available on GitHub. If this subject speaks to you, this is an invitation to explore it further. Gravity, as the fourth spatial dimension. I hope you enjoyed this exploration of the G4D model, and I'd really like to hear what you think. Whether you're intrigued, uncertain, disappointed, or relieved, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know I'll take your likes as a signal to continue.